Legendary Spotlight Black Bolt. That's it. We're here. We've gone through a majority of the legendaries that we uh, can get in the early game, and now we're moving on to the mid-game legendaries. Again, these are released in the order that I think players should work towards, uh, mostly because of what's available at the beginning of the game, at the middle of the game, at the end of the game, and technically, without spending a ton of money, you really can't farm Black Bolt, or the characters to unlock Black Bolt, uh, until you're level 70 anyway, and it usually takes a couple of months to get to level 70. For me, it took about six months. For someone spending money, maybe less. That depends on you. But because of that, we're here, we're talking about Black Bolt. So, we're going to start off, as always, with the availability. If you focus on nothing but making sure that you can unlock Black Bolt, you're giving up a lot of early game and mid game value. That does translate into late game value for, yes, probably the best legendary or tied for the best legendary that's currently in the game. It's just on his own. But just on his own, he's not holding your arena. He's not uh, clearing the entire raid. It's important to have a good value of characters, and your defender's team, plus as guardians with Black Bolt, is probably not going to cut it. Your aim team plus Black Bolt with Asgardians, not going to cut it. And the reason I keep saying Asgardians is because, surprise, we're back to uh, unlocks that don't make sense. You need a team of Asgardians in order to unlock Black Bolt. That said, he is arguably the best or tied for the best legendary character in regards to what he gives you when you unlock him. He is one of the best arena characters. He is one of the best war characters on either side, offense or defense. Obviously, he's better on offense, but you can use him either place. Uh, great on both sides of arena. Fine in blitz for the conversation. Usable in any version of Dark Dimension. Uh, I wouldn't say he's amazing in Dark Dimension 3, but I used him. Uh, and any raid that he can take part in, he is the best character. He is what Rocket to the BKT was. Uh, times three. The damage output he releases, the bonuses, uh, his execute, absolutely phenomenal. So, take a moment, take it in. This is Black Bolt. And we're going to look at what it takes to unlock him. His availability, as it were. We'll do that right now. To unlock Black Bolt, you require a team of five Asgardians at five star. Hella, being the hardest farm, uh, and I say the hardest in terms of accessing, not necessarily the hardest in terms of uh, obtaining shards. Once you access her, it's relatively easy to click auto-fight multiple times. Uh, but Hela is literally gate gated behind level 70, and your ability to not only clear through three nodes with aim slash hydra slash the sinister six team, clear through, not necessarily three star, but three star, at least one team comprised of villain mystic characters. Of course, one of them being Hela, the other one being Loki. Thor, accessible incredibly early through the raid store. Heimdall, an arena store farm. Uh, okay. Uh, I wouldn't farm him early because we've done the math on this before. If you're buying one offer a day, you know, one five a day because that's what you can afford in your arena uh it still won't take more than 60 days around 60 days to max out the character to get a, or specifically to get a, a five star version of the character to unlock black bolt uh and then the math just kind of goes up from there because it's 310 you know by the same amount of time you'll have a six star etc 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 uh, so I don't think it's very important that you start farming him early. I also don't think what you get from Heimdall early, or the Asgardians in general, is incredibly relevant. Uh, Heimdall is actually a terrible character, but he is accessible there. I still recommend the farm order of Drax uh, from Arena Store, then Juggernaut, 
slash Vulture, whichever one is... I say, I say Vulture, but Juggernaut and Vulture are two and three, based on which character you think is the most important. Then you move to Heimdall. After that point, uh, well, then I say Mordo, but we'll talk about more uh, in a moment. So, that's Heimdall. Loki, Node Farmable, Mystic Campaign. Not the latest, but close. Um, there are plenty of Mystic characters now that you can use. You can use the Supernatural team. Most of them are accessible early. Um, you can use some combination of random characters. Uh, if you happen to cross the Thanos again, if you happen to cross the Hell, if you got lucky and pulled any of them, Thor, you don't need Thor to be able to do it. Uh, they are available, uh, so Loki is a little bit easier to farm. You can usually farm him around level 60 to 65, somewhere in that range, uh, by the time you've worked on those characters. So farming him is totally reasonable. And of course, Sif is a War Store farm, which... Honestly, War Credits suck the earlier stages of the game you're at. Like, you're in bad... Uh, you're not getting many points per win, you know, assuming you're winning the fight, even if you're fighting shield characters, you're only getting maybe 80 to 100 arena credits per win. You're probably only doing five attacks a war in the very early stages of war, or around the time you would unlock war normally. Unless, of course, you're being carried, then do whatever you want, none of it matters. Uh, you're not winning wars, but in your victories, you're in low silver or bronze, or whatever the low ranks of, of, you know, alliances start off as. So, your victory rewards is maybe enough to buy one Sif Shard every other war, let alone some overlap. Uh, it's it's hard to farm her. I think, just like Heimdall, I think you start worrying about Sif around the time that you start planning to beat Hela. So maybe around level 67, 68... When you know you're a couple weeks away from hitting 70 and you're starting to work on the characters that you need to get towards Hela, that's when you start making the swap to start farming characters like Heimdall or Sif, whatever the case may be. But those are the cases. Now again, these characters are technically available um, as early as you can access the store that has them. That just, it doesn't matter you're probably not going to get value. And just to let you know, the team of Thor, Heimdall, Loki, Sif, and then Hulk is not going to hold in, de in, in defense. You'll hold reasonably well, but you're not going to hold long enough that the first person to pick up a legendary character is not going to crush you. So, as we've talked about in the Asgardian reviews, this is the team that you need. This is where they're available. They will unlock Black Bolt. They're very hard to, to come by. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the definition of the mid-game. When you are almost at level cap, and you're starting to access characters that you need for something. This is where the, the mid-game begins. So, here's your mid-game team. We don't have to go into detail about how good the Asgardians are. I think we know that by now. I have a video on them. They are a great team. They're not a great early team, unless you're buying them and having them stronger than anybody else. Then then you just have a stronger, good team than anybody else. It's no big deal. No difference in buying, like, the full Brotherhood team or anything else like that. So, good team. You're going to use them anyway, as opposed to, like, maybe the Sinister Six loses a little bit of value uh, as you're using her to unlock Shuri and, uh, you know, Invisible Woman. They don't get value until much later in the game. The Guardians have value early, but not so much later. Uh, the Brotherhood kind of holds their value, but they split off and do different things. Uh, we're not talking about the Kree minions to unlock Nick Fury. Notice I didn't do a Nick Fury video. Don't want to. No need to. Anyway, uh, and then same thing with Iron Man and S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, they don't hold value. This team is worthwhile. And then what you get is worthwhile. So this is one of the first legendaries they released where even though the team is not the team that you need to beat, uh, you know, like Magneto or, or Star Wars, the team that you need to use the Legendary with, uh, it's still, you're getting a good team, and as a result of it, you're getting the linchpin of another pretty good team. So, that's what when it comes to availability. Now, a little bit more detail about usability, I think we'll talk about, and I'll go into it. Uh, so, in Arena, Black Bolt's biggest thing is that he has a very big single target damage attack, uh, and he has an assassinate, assassinate being, or an execute being a World of Warcraft term from the days where 
uh, you know, someone under a certain percentage of health, this attack does more damage. Basically, once a character goes under health, and we'll talk about that when we look at the kit, uh, like, he just takes him out. That's his value. The fact that characters killed by him can't revive uh, is huge because it takes away an entire facet of the game that some people just never had access to. Because by the time you get a, someone who can res, there's not many characters who can res, let alone self-res, Black Bolt takes that away. Most important being Ultron. Uh, as you as you see, people who have Black Bolt are fundamentally stronger against Ultrons um, because he doesn't res, and that's one of the best things about him. So, that's his usability when it comes to arena, both offense and defense. And then we go to war. There's about probably three or four teams that he specifically hard counters. Uh, him. Just him. And then you can look at what his entire team does uh, when you combine it with Yo-Yo or Crystal. Not so much Karnak. But War, absolutely phenomenal powerhouse War offense team, kind of like the Black Order. Uh, you don't see them on defense because there are some things that the Inhumans and Black Bolt can do on offense that not many people can do. So they're a little bit more limited. Um, I don't want to go into detail about Black Order on this video. So... We have Black Bolt in pretty much every game. Oh, raids, not even a conversation. The second you get Black Bolt, he goes in raids. He helps do a little bit extra damage with his AoE. If you have Star Ward, you could feed energy into him. If you have Thanos, you could feed energy into him. If you, like, you could make a weird BKT hybrid team with him, assuming you don't have the full team. Um, and that's great. A legendary character is only as good as how good they are, not only to their team, but outside of it and black bolt is amazing both on his team kind of required to make his team useful and uh, amazing outside of his team basically the amount of damage he puts in the control over a fight and the utility of being able to prevent resurrections and assassinate characters that are in red health huge boosts now let's talk about his kit uh, i'm not gonna have to go into much detail about why i've tier four everything but he is when it comes to stats, the highest statted character in the game. He has insane high damage, insanely high health, whatever armor doesn't matter, really good focus, pretty decent resistance, and really strange. Like, he's got the bar for speed, 100. Basically, anyone under 100 is useless, right? Is really slow. I'd say 107 is the kind of cutoff for me, so he's a little bit slower than the average, but what he gets for it is complete value. Starting with his passive. Characters killed by Black Bolt cannot revive. Cool. When enemy drops about 25% health, they get hit for 200% damage. We saw a stat before. He's basically cracking people for 50k, when my Black Bolt anyway, at this investment, uh, whenever they go to 25% health. No. Some characters... Uh, a quarter of their health, they don't have 200,000 health. They have 180,000. Um, so this is usually just death. Uh, if that enemy is villain tech, attack that enemy for 400%. So specifically villain tech characters. So all those nebulas better watch out. Because that 25% almost always will kill them. That's basically 100,000 points on a, on a hiccup. At least mine is. Yours will, you know, do the math, multiply it by four. Um, it, it's it's a big attack, and the stronger he is, the better, the easier it is for that attack to do work. On enemy summon, so whenever an enemy summons, apply disrupted and clear three positive effects on the summoner. There's got a lot of value on that. Every time a Greg dies, Hella would get a disrupt placed on her. That's huge. That helps them beat the uh, the Asgardians or him specifically beat the Asgardian. Every time. Mr. Sinister clones somebody. That's a summon. Puts Disrupt on Sinister. And clear the positive effects. Huge. Every single thing on his passive is absolutely insane. Uh, gain 40% resistance. And humans gain 40% resistance. Now, just to let you know, the, the tier 4 on this is mostly damage. But it's also another max health increase. Right here. Goes from 30 to 50. So... Just having his health go up by 50% of his base stats is huge. An extra, you know, 20%. But the that 50% damage and 100 here going from 150 to 200, all relevant, totally worthwhile. Sonic Scream, 
attack everybody for 500. Now, you know how I say damage is damage is damage. When your damage is the only thing your job is, uh, yeah, I want more. And also, this is a 120, if you look over my shoulder. So it goes from four, from 380 to 500. This is huge damage. Five times my damage, you know, that's 125,000 AoE, not including defense downs or crits or anything like that. Literally, the highest damage AoE you can reasonably get from a single character without adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing anything. Just putting him in a fight, this is huge. It's so big that even going into defense down, it's still doing more damage than some characters' AoEs uh, that just try, just because of how the percentage works and how his numbers line up. Staggering voice. Uh, attack primary target for 600% damage. This attack is unavoidable. If he's blinded, it hits. This is a single target damage that does more than his AoE. That should kind of put everything into perspective. Again, the last couple stages all go up by 100. This is uh, an execute. This is an assassinate. This usually can go to one character and probably obliterate them. Uh, and it only gets better as time goes on, as you have him stronger and more investment. And when we have Royal Striker, uh, if the primary target has slow, flip two negative effects on self. Attack primary target for 400% damage. Clear two positive effects. Now that two positive effect is an up from one uh, when you go to the tier four, and it goes from 350 to 400. The two positive effects on clear, he, like I said, he has pretty decent focus, so... It's probably going to remove some buffs. We're not talking about the interaction with the rest of his team right now. Again, this is just about him. But clearly, with Yo-Yo, you can see the implications. It's huge. It's Every aspect of his kit is a little bit stronger than any other uh, version of it. Like, this could have just, you know, done the, the second sentence. Could have just done a ton of damage and clear two positive effects. It could have just flipped the, the mean and done damage. Like, it didn't have to do any of it. All of his attacks are just a little bit better than everything else. He's one of the most pushed characters. Push being, like, take something normal and then make it a little bit stronger. And then we're going to talk about ISO 8s. ISO 8s uh, blaster type. So, that's there. What type do you put on? You put on Striker. Because he's got the highest damage stat in the game. So, 5% damage on Black Bolt is worth more than 5% damage on almost any other character. No, on any other character in the game. Period. That's how math works. 5% of a bigger number is a bigger number. Because his damage is so high, 5% is so big that it scales with very few diminishing returns. Now, there's some. I wouldn't necessarily 5 Black Bolt. I know plenty of people have. I know plenty of people there. I'm... 120k black bolt, 7 star, 6 red. You know, maybe I'm a little bit stronger than the average player. Maybe most people are putting the 5 on them because they only have a 5 star black bolt or something and that little 5% matters. For me, it doesn't. It doesn't make too much of a difference because either he killed everything or he wasn't going to. That's what I see when I use my black bolt attacks. It either kills the character it's supposed to kill or... It doesn't do even enough damage. Like, that 5% is not going to be the difference of him going from yellow to red. You know what I mean? So, as of right now, when I click ult on Black Bolt in U7.5, uh, whatever is left up is cough dead. I, uh, so, it doesn't make a difference. Except, like, Juggernaut. But that's my story. So, I'm just letting you know what I've experienced. Uh, same thing with Red Stars. I'm never putting that 7th Red Star on him. If I pull it, great. I'd be very happy. But that extra percentage of damage for the red star, it's it's good stats, but it's unnecessary. Now we're reaching diminishing returns when it comes to how these characters work. And more importantly, uh, not just the the 10% damage you get here, and not just the 20% the health that you get from anywhere because he has some of the highest health in the game, or I think he's like eighth in the list. Getting this attack, a second attack, for 75% damage. This is, again, ignoring the level 5. 75% of his base damage is still insane. <laughs> you know? Let alone re re making the actual... Because 100 would be 25 or 27,000 as we just saw. 75% uh, would be there. But it's also another buff clear. Because it's a second attack. 
I've heard people say Raider to take advantage of crit. Crit's only a 30% damage increase. Yeah. And unless you're guaranteed to crit, 30% divided among the, the pr probability of it happening is like a 6%, 7.5% increase on overall damage. But not to everybody, to specific... Like, the numbers go up, but it doesn't apply it to everybody, you know? Uh, Skirmisher, I've seen... Again, his basic is already removing buffs. If I have to ult or special, I probably don't want the buffs there that are already on it. I, You know, like, it doesn't matter if it removes the buff after the attack. So, not necessary. Healer is actually totally fine on Black Bolt, because, again, high health pool... Problem is he's slow, so you're not going to get too much value. And there's no reason for Fortifier at all. He's not... If, if he dies, it's, it's not his fault. You know? Like, he didn't do anything wrong. And now, again, keep in mind, my Black Bolt's incredibly strong. There's probably very few Black Bolts much stronger than this. You know, there's a couple five-star Black Bolts. There's a couple of, uh, of you know, seven red-star Black Bolts around there. So what does that bring him to? Maybe 140? 140,000 total power. Uh, and that might be great. But I don't see things at 110, 115, 120k that are making my Black Bolt scared. So I'm not particularly worried about something at 130 or 140k. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to Black Bolt. He literally is the best. I'm sorry if it didn't sound like I was that excited at the beginning of this thing. Because it's one of those things where... You, someone had to have told you, right? If you're watching a YouTube video, you probably found me through a friend or, or maybe you were clicking through YouTube. You've heard that Black Bolt is amazing, and he has. He has held up since he's been released at the beginning of the year. He still is one of the best legendaries. When he's relevant, I can say in all certainty, if I could start the game with my choice of any character in the game, I don't know if it would be Black Bolt. Not to say he's not good, it's just the scaling for Black Bolt. He's, he is just damage. And so much in the early stages of the fight, like as you're leveling, you don't care. Like you're already behind on damage anyway. But I, I, he'd be on my list. He'd be on my short list. Like if my option was Black Bolt or like any of the earlier legendaries, I'd say, yeah, no, I'd, I'd much rather Black Bolt uh, instead of Star Lord. But that would also imply that I could get Black Bolt in the same time I could get Star Lord, and that's that's about eight hundred or nine hundred dollars worth of spending uh in order to lock up from zero or, you know, getting really lucky with mega orbs and stuff. So Black Bolt, literally one of the best characters in the game. I would say you start working on him after you've gotten some of those starter legendaries off because you've built out your teams. You now have a lot of options. And honestly, if you were to build a team off of, you know, some of the legendaries we started off with. So, Star-Lord, Black Bolt, Shuri, uh, Invisible Woman. I don't don't think I'd put Magneto on that team. But, like, anyone else, <laughs> you know, that team is great. You know, maybe Symbiote Spider-Man, maybe Captain Marvel. You know, that's a great team right there. You're not going to regret it. It's probably better than most of the other teams you could have uh and it's definitely better than the asgardians so oh hella if you have black Bull, you have a hella hella could be the fifth on that team and that team is probably an arena team and a raid team yeah that's the best team in the game so that team right there is going to set you through everything um and that's why i think black bolt is probably the best first legendary for you to work towards when you're off when you've decided like i'm in this game i like it maybe i've given him some money maybe i've given him a lot of time you know you've probably been playing for a couple months and by a couple i mean eight or nine almost a year it's time like you know you should be getting black bolt around the time you get a seven star wolverine if that kind of makes sense in your head <laughs> or you should be thinking about black bolt around that time uh, anyway uh comment below and let me know how black bolt has affected your roster uh, I know uh, from my stream, a lot of times people will come in and say, hey, I just got this Black Bolt, and he's great, and he does this, and what do I do now? And I'm like, just invest in him. But I, he's bio, and there's so many good bio characters. Yes, there are. And in spite of all of the good bio characters, you still work on Black Bolt. Uh, same reason you still work on a character like Yo-Yo or Captain Marvel or anything like that. So 
Comment below let me know how that works out for you. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.